Welcome back to McChats here on McGTV, youtube.com slash Mike McGTV, on Twitter at Mike McGTV. I finally did it. I was able to sit down and watch uh, the first Coffin Joe movie and glad to have Dan Bauer from Three Geeks back on McChats here to talk some uh, horror movies and to talk some Z-grade or some lesser known cinematic fare. So welcome back, Dan. Thank you, sir. And I would say that this is not Z grade. I, I would rate this. This is Marin's A game. I mean, all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can buy that too. Um, by that, I mean like probably more into the lesser known fare thing since it is from Brazil originally. And oh, yeah. only people within a specific, you know, circle with regards to horror and being, you know, being very knowledgeable about, horror not just in american cinemas but across the globe would be aware of this film probably but this should be mainstream i agree i I think it's that good (laughs) so um yeah we finally reconvened to be able to discuss the first in a trilogy that actually spans from 1964 to i believe 2008 correct yes uh technically the the original trilogy had the final film as one of the ones he made in the early 80s but after he made the 2008 one that got dropped and this one got added so don't ask me why that happened but it, instead of having four or five films because he's done a lot of like the coffin joe stuff there's there's now three main films that deal with coffin joe but i mean i i agree with you in saying it's like it's an interesting it's an interesting film for for me Personally, when I saw it, uh, is that there's there's elements of it I really really do enjoy, as a horror fan and on a horror movie level, and it's whether it's regards to you know for the time the production or the story and some of the acting and so forth. There's stuff to appreciate there, but then there, I mean, there's stuff where you can really kind of have some fun at the movie's expense too. I feel. Which isn't oh, yeah. a, which isn't saying like it's not worth the watch. It definitely is worth the watch. I feel if you enjoy this type of this decade of horror or this particular type of story, perhaps. But there is definitely <laughs> it, it, there are some laughably fun moments. Where I come from on this one, I mean, I'm not like you watch the movie and you be quiet and you enjoy it. But like Marin's to me is like Rudy Ray Moore. He's a dude from from Brazil whose father owned a movie theater and he wanted to make movies. And he's like, we don't make horror movies? Well, now we do. And this was such a hit that he just, like, he is Coffin Joe. It's it's his alter ego now. I mean, he he grows his his nails out and he he did like a, a movie host TV show that showed whole movies and he was the the host, like the old creature features. See, I that was definitely the vibe I was getting as I dug into this movie a little bit more. Was you mentioned the idea of that he was a host in a sense, or he was he kind of facilitated this format for other horror movies or horror stories to be told. I was getting kind of a very cool Tales from the Crypt type vibe from this. Oh yeah, I mean after this got like really popular in Brazil. Like, he fully embraced the Coffin Joe thing, and, and he did... There was a show in the 60s that ran for years that was kind of like a Twilight Zone. You know, it, it's going to be low budget, because it's, it's Brazil. But, you know, he, he was the host of that. Then, like, years later, he did, like, Creature Things as Coffin Joe. He kind of reminds me of the guy from uh, uh, Fright Night. Roddy McDowell? Was it Roddy McDowell's character? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much along those lines where, yeah, the persona kind of takes on a life of its own outside of the film itself. I can see that. Or something, I mean, to a lesser extent, to something like Elvira. Yeah, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Except her movies came after she was host. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, I mean, that that is kind of the thing where it's like now he's known more for that role <laughs> or kind of embracing that role outside of films as well, I guess. Yeah, like he, he started his, his career doing Western. I, I could believe it. And then, then he did did um this. Then he started doing doing exploitation films. He'd make a pretty good Sardou. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
like like I don't know anything about his like personal life. So you know, if he's a cannibal or something, sorry, I didn't research that. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, as as far as his his film career, man, I I really have to give him a lot of credit. Before we get into some of the things we enjoyed specifically about this film, and also some things where kind of like, ha, um, you want to give kind of a rundown of the basic plot of this movie? I mean, it's a pretty straightforward Edgar Allan Poe-ish almost type of story. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but no Dr. Jekyll. Uh, Coffin Joe is just a bad man, and he he's an undertaker. He lives in this relatively small town. Um, I think it's supposed to be Sao Paulo, but I'm not sure. And all he really wants is a woman to bear his seed. He sees himself as, like, smarter and and thus better than most people and he he wants that passed on and and that's all he wants and he's as i said a, a, a real dick he doesn't believe in the church he he thinks it's superstition goes out of his way just to piss people off and his wife can't bear children so he knocks her off then he tries to get in with his best friend's girl so he kills him and her um or actually she she commits suicide and then he tries to get on this uh, one one of his neighbors, like cousins or something. It, yeah, it's I'm the niece. Really it's sure. the niece, Marta. Oh, niece. Okay. Yeah. But then all the ghosts of the people that he's wronged in in the past turn on him and uh, basically kill him, and that's the end. Oh, and you forgot to mention this adorable gypsy woman who shows up every once oh. in a while, <laughs> who yeah, yeah, who yeah, prophesied. The witch is awesome who prophesies all of this, not just for some of the other characters, because at one point, his friend Antonio, and I'm forgetting the fiance's name, the one that killed herself, but it's Antonio, her, and him all go to this gypsy woman's place to get, to get their futures read, or fortunes read, before the wedding, I guess. And, like, she's quick on the draw with these prophecies. <laughs> she's like, look into my eyes, two seconds later, Here's what's going to happen. You're going to die. You're going to die. Your soul's going to get taken to hell. <laughs> so, like, and then I, I do like, well, we'll get into specifics <laughs> a little bit later. But, yeah, I, I really did kind of dig the, um, it's a simple story to, for sure. But I was very much getting the vibe you get if you were reading something like Edgar Allan Poe. Or, like I mentioned before, an episode of Tales from the Crypt, I was definitely, or even maybe a little bit of Twilight Zone, probably not as sophisticated as Twilight Zone's plots could be. Yeah, I could see that. I, I mean, will, I will concede that. <laughs> you don't, you don't, it's, you don't have to be a, you don't have to think too hard about the kind of <laughs> no, <laughs> themes here. No, that's true. I mean, it's, it's shown blatantly early on that Joe is not a nice guy. Yeah. And, yeah, so they're, they're not really, like, beating you in the head with it the whole time <laughs> or or to a lesser extent the idea of like is this all in his well i guess you could leave it up in the air if it's all in his head or not what happens to him eventually but <laughs> i don't know so it tells me like they were going for the very much uh yep hell exists like i have a feeling i wouldn't be surprised if sam raimi took a little bit of uh influence from this to do that really uh over the top and not subtle at all drag me to hell movie <laughs> I I really like that movie actually. But. Eh, that's a that's a talk for another time. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, we digress. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, there I do appreciate the story. I mean, the story is pretty straightforward, but it's still engaging. I I love the uh, the acting in this, honestly, with the exception of Antonio. He is way too easygoing about everything, even his own death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Oh yeah, yeah, you can walk my girlfriend home after you tell me she's hot. That's that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I do love kind of the everyone's kind of going for broke. It's almost soap opery at times. Even though yeah, Joe is a very unlikable character. At least like he's giving a performance that your you had your eyes are just glued to throughout. He's giving it his oh, all. Yeah, I mean he he is extremely likable as a a horribly bad bad man. <laughs> yeah. No, just even like during the murders. I mean, like I, I love the fact that it, it they they show close ups of his eyes and like these you know the the veins just just start showing up black. 
to to show what a bad bad man he is <laughs> the the incredible hulk narration was coming into my head i'm not gonna lie whenever they showed him cock his eyebrow <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> Like I couldn't help it, Doctor David Banner. <laughs> yeah, I mean this. This to me, I mean, you could easily fit this into somewhere between the Universal and and the Hammer Classic Monsters series, and like not really miss a beat. Yeah, I can I can definitely see this kind of yeah drawing those comparisons, and it, I wasn't bored at all really at any point in the movie. There's definitely there's definitely points in the film where I had to suspend my disbelief and not necessarily about the supernatural stuff. Uh, yeah. The only thing where I was just, I had a hard time kind of letting go of like, come on, was with this stupid ass town of people. <laughs> because, yeah, like you mentioned before, Joe is right out of the gate a thoroughly unlikable presence. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine because at least he's entertaining and at least he you know you get an idea of why the character's an asshole and stuff like that and you you can believe that he would go to these extremes and so forth to get his way essentially whatever his way is you know whether it's yeah. just <laughs> getting what he wants in the moment or this long-term goal of like yes my bloodline must continue but at the same time the fact that first of all I'm surprised he had a best friend, but also the fact that this town is just quaking in fear of this guy. And I get there is kind of this uh, undertone of, well, because they're all, it's feeding into his whole, I'm stronger than they are because I don't, I don't hide behind my fate or I don't hide behind faith or anything like that. And they're a very superstitious townsfolk. It never crosses their mind to say, hey, instead of just one of us taking this guy on one at a time, why don't we all just gang gang up on this dude? <laughs> well, it's it's the kung fu movie. Uh, you know, the one guy fights and he loses, and the next guy fights and he loses. You know, it, it's the it's the cue to the bad guy. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you go, now serving number five, soon to serve number <laughs> six. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that as well. But also, not just the idea of like. You, I'm sure you all could easily overpower this dude, but <laughs> there was one point where I'm like, I don't think we really need this specific input from this specific character, like the police chief or whatever, saying like at at one of the funerals of the people he's of the doctor he killed, and he's like, oh, accidents will happen. That's unfortunate. And then he walks away, and then after he leaves, the he, the guy just looks to the rest of the town. And is like, come on, people, we need to get some evidence. <laughs> and I'm like, there is evidence out there. Just the other night, he sliced off a dude's finger at a poker game for no reason, and you all saw it. So there is evidence that this dude probably should be detained for something. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what what happened to his wife? <laughs> yeah, and then and it, best and, friend and, and the fiance, best friend's girl, and, <laughs> and I mean as. As the body count rises, yeah, I mean, you've, you've got more and more uh, uh, evidence against this dude. I kind of felt like that's where it was going to go, though, is that somewhere towards the end, they would all show up and just finish him off, but leave it open as to, you know, maybe they finished him off or maybe evil or Satan did it. But throughout this whole movie, they're all like quaking in their boots from this dude. It's like, just just work together, everybody. You can nail this sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but then there wouldn't be any story, of course. But at the same time, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, because you you need you know to to benefit the greater narrative by by having you know God Himself say what? Oh, really? You're going to challenge me, little man? Here's some scary ass ghosts. <laughs> well, I I mean, like I said, if they just done away with this whole like we're looking into him, he's like he could be a suspect. Just do away with that altogether because it's like you guys aren't doing anything on this front, even though you clearly should. <laughs> Like, that was just a part of my logical side of my brain that I'm just like, let it go, Mike. You got to let this go. <laughs> but it was still well, who, fun. Who's going to make coffins for the town if if not him? I mean, <laughs> Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you got, well, if anything, you guys need uh, another funeral home <laughs> in this town to kind of have some business going. Because, yeah, it makes for all those scenes where they bring those caskets into the catacombs and stuff <laughs> all the more awkward that he's there, like, leering. Yeah, uh, all of yeah. That. <laughs> And his fia- and the dude's fiance straight up calls him a murderer, but then immediately she's kind of okay with him when he brings over a bird. 
I'm like, did you not forget that you called him a murderer earlier today? <laughs> well, those two were, were were really made for each other then. Not not Joe, but uh, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Antonio. Yeah, there you go. Him him and Terezenha? Uh, yeah, I think that's her name. Terezenha or something like that. There you go. That sounds a lot better when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're both, like, super laid back. He's like, oh, you murderer. Ah, just take me home. Yeah. And like you mentioned before, like, Joe's making no – he's not beating around the bush about the fact that he finds Terezenia, like, smoking hot for some reason. I mean, she she's a perfectly fine-looking woman and stuff. Um, but he's just like, oh, so beautiful. She should bear my seed. I'm like, if it wasn't for the fact that your wife can't re- conceive, you know, she's beautiful too. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's the problem. He doesn't care about you know the, yeah. the woman. He just wants an heir. <laughs> yeah, and his logic is like my bloodline is immortal, which I guess it is because there's two more of these movies. So with him, yeah. So it, I guess there. I guess he had a point. And a whole lot of spinoff stuff. He even had a comic book. Huh. I'll have to check out the comic book now. Yeah, I gotta find some of that. I I like that this is like this is old school horror. This is very much in in the vein of like the old Universal monster things. Like like earlier, I, I said it was like uh, you know, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde with no Doctor Jekyll. I mean, all all you get is Joe as Hyde just being an asshole the whole movie. I, I like that it's it's got a whole lot of heart. My my favorite scene is when he he demands to have meat on Friday because they're a very you know Catholic country, Brazil. And, gets this huge leg of you know, lamb. The, yeah, and, and the his his cook or wherever he went, it's not his wife, it's somebody else. He goes, uh, uh, oh, you can't do that, you know, it's it's Friday. <laughs> and and he's like, I'll I'll have meat if I have to like eat a man or something. Yeah, he's like, I'll eat so, human flesh if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> so so later he's at the table in, in front of this window and he's got this yeah, he's got, he's got this giant leg of lamb or <laughs> and, and the and the religious procession is going on out outside, and the the priest just, just like looks up, and, and Joe's got this giant thing of meat, and, and he does the stations of the cross in front moving. of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, when when that happened, it reminded me because I used to watch a lot of House when that was on, okay. and it reminded me of a scene where House was sitting at home eating ice cream and watching the biggest loser marathon on TV because he's like I like I like to pretend that they can see me eating the ice cream <laughs> through the screen it reminded me of that because the way he's going at that lamb he's just like mm, so good glad I'm eating this on Friday like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't have this on Friday but I can and then later on when he's like boy go get my lamb from home when he's at the bar and the guy brings the whole like leg to him and he starts eating it he's like hey you come over here and have some of this and he's like i really i really shouldn't sir he's like eat it (laughs) and makes the dude start eating it the same leg of lamb like i kind of i kind of enjoyed that i was like what an asshole man but still it's fun (laughs) i also like the witch at at the beginning telling you not to watch the movie when you're already watching the movie <laughs> yeah and then like I, again she's quick on the draw because she's like don't watch this movie one one thousand two one thousand all right oh, you asked here. for it <laughs> 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 she yeah. gave me the, um there was I, the point where the biggest laugh i mean i wasn't really la- i wasn't laughing at all at this movie's expense throughout but th- there are moments where you're kind of like that's kind of silly but i something about that just tickles me right when he's walking yeah. marta to her aunt's house and then out of nowhere there's the gypsy woman's just there in the forest laughing and cackling and he's very yeah. matter-of-factly like oh that's the gypsy woman <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's on the haunted mansion tour or whatever <laughs> and over to your left is the gypsy woman well he he said that he would show her around town i mean i guess that's that's just one of the sites i guess the local the the local flavor <laughs> <laughs> strange gypsy woman on the bender over here okay what else is awesome about well this? is there anything that is there anything that you feel like could have been improved on in this movie at any point i mean he, he could have gotten like real, real actors for most of the parts i mean me for like i said aside from aside from antonio everyone's investing really well in their roles it's big yeah, or I mean, small it, it's, it's not bad i mean it's not like uh, i don't know like the veil bad 
<laughs> no, God. I feel I feel the part where it kind of shows a little is not the effects themselves, but how people interact with the effects. Like when he smashes, apparently that's supposed to be a very old man that he smashes the Jesus crown of thorns into. Yeah. that He takes it pretty well for having a sharp uh, statue smashed into his face. Yeah. <laughs> he walks yeah. that off pretty easily. <laughs> But, I write most of this off as, as being on a, a horribly shoestring budget. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, like, Brazil in the 60s, I'm sure their cinema wasn't, like, even close to like, what the American studios were doing. When they're walking through through the forest, I believe that's a soundstage, and, and they just went out and stole some trees and, like, like put them in, in a row. I, yeah, I could maybe see that a little bit. I will say though, for even if it was on a shoestring budget, the production design yeah. and the set design, I kind of was. I, I really kind of dug. I dug a lot of the uh, interiors. Very claustrophobic. Everyone's kind of squeezed together, and maybe that was done for efficiency, cost efficiency, perhaps. It's like we can't afford a massive bar set, but here, let's just put like four tables really close together, really cram people in there. It, yeah, it felt kind of tense because then he'll just be off on his own in the corner, staring at everybody. Oh yeah, I also love the uh, when the ghost starts showing up. Mm-hmm. You've got the one ghost with it with the candle. Yeah, like the, the the first one that pops out. That's really cool. I'm pretty sure they they just did the whole effect by like scratching the negative. It, it, yeah, it very much <laughs> his aura, right? The aura yeah. around him, like yeah, it looked it looked like that's what they did with scratch. A lot of the a lot of the effects, even though by today's standards we call them quaint, I'd say for sixty four those and for you know like you said minimal budget perhaps those effects are pretty cool actually. Like the processional that's done with like the negative of the film, yeah, and but it's done through like a haze and yeah the uh, the one uh, was was it the ghost of the fiance that was like doing I mean a stereotypical. Ooh, ooh, but like, it was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I really dig the old effects on this. Yeah. I don't know. I think it more in, enhances the film than, than takes away from it. Well, when you compare it to probably the way this would be handled these days, where those would all be CGI ghosts, and those would be CGI spiders put on people's faces, like... <laughs> You got to give these people credit. They let they let this guy put an actual tarantula on their face. That part I was that is true. Yeah, I, I was like cringing at that part because I'm like, oh my god, that's a real fucking spider. <laughs> it's like he might have killed his wife for, or the actress playing his wife for real. Who knows? That's a big honking spider. Not the best spider scene I've ever seen, but but pretty damn good. What other spider scenes would you compare that to? We'll get to it someday. Trust me. It better not be the big ass mechanical spider from Wild Wild West. That's all. I'm no, saying. no, 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 not at all, sir. <laughs> um, the other thing I like to, I mean, I, I would take a tarantula crawling on my face as opposed to being actually set on fire by this guy, <laughs> the doctor. Who at first I was wondering why he was going after the doctor, but then I'm like, oh yeah, of course he'd probably do the autopsy on um, what's her name, and then be like, oh, she was assaulted. So, yeah. so yeah, I understand he was covering his tracks then at that point, but <laughs> just lights him up, pokes out his eyes with his long ass fingernails and then lights the dude on fire. I was like, oh my God. And that's actually a guy on fire. So I'm got to have a lot of faith in your uh, director there. <laughs> Either that or you just kind of like wrap up just some guy you find on, on, on the street, you know, with a bunch of cellophane, then put some uh, <laughs> like fiery goop on him, light him up, you know, throw him through the room and then douse them with, with water at the end, give them 500 bucks and a sandwich. And, you, know. <laughs> you think that Brazilian <laughs> filmmaking <laughs> practices in the 60s find, <laughs> find transients and just offer them five bucks to get set on fire? Oh, my God. That's what they would do in Italy. Well, in Italy, it would blur the lines between reality and fiction <laughs> so bad that you'd have to testify in front of people that no, I did not actually kill anybody. I killed a shit ton <laughs> yeah. of an- I killed a shit ton of jungle animals, but I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> this is my cast. They were actually not killed by natives. I did cut the head off of a turtle, though. Yeah, and uh, what chucked them. Uh, some kind of monkey out of, out of a car for some reason. We're, we're going to get to those movies soon, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so good. Yeah, I, I would wholeheartedly recommend this movie. Whether, like you mentioned before, whether or not you you thoroughly enjoy this this particular kind of horror film, like you said, that echoes a lot of the Universal Monster sensibilities, or whether you 
just appreciate kind of, I guess, clever or ingenuity in low budget filmmaking. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the budget for this was very non-existent, perhaps. Yeah, but the print of it, I mean, it's really clean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was now, it was a pretty clean copy I saw. Like, he, he knew what he was doing, you know? It, it's not like, yeah, I made this movie, here you go, and it's, you know, it's got all scratches from, like, editing. And it's people. definitely someone making the, making the most of his resources who has the talent to be able to make something oh, yeah. worthwhile. If you think this is bizarre, wait, wait till we get to the second one. <laughs> I'm 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 all in, man. Like th- this was um, <laughs> after having kind of a week of a, a few ups and a, but a lot of downs. I needed this kind of bit of refreshing, you know, bit of cinema to sink my teeth into and just appreciate for what it is. I think this is pre- so this is a pretty fun at, ride. At, at at least you're not um, Antonio. Joe's best friend. Yep, pretty much. At least, at least I know I would be a little bit more savvy as to what it's what's actually going on. I'd be like, "Hey, but, stop comparing her to an angel." But, but even when he gets like nailed in the head, he's kind of like, "But Joe, you're my friend." <laughs> when he wakes up in the tub, he's kind of like, "Uh, hey, head hurt, head hurt." <laughs> but I guess, yeah, I would be maybe a little discombobulated too if I Drowning? took a what? Oh. <laughs> If I took a fireplace poker to the head too, I guess I would be a little out of sorts. But you know, I would I wouldn't be friends for starters with a dude who already looks like the devil. So <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that that brings up uh, Joe's soliloquy toward towards the end mm-hmm. when he's when he's talking to to God. I I think that's a really strong scene. I mean, it's it's you know operatically overdone. Oh yeah, but but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly, yeah, I really aside like I said, aside from that subplot of like we need to find out what's going on with this guy. I'm like, it's pretty clear what's going on with this guy, everybody. <laughs> you're all just a bunch of you're all just a bunch of wusses. That's it. That's what it comes down to. But aside from that little thing, the writing in this I feel is really good and like you mentioned the monologues he has to work with and when the character has to explain why he's doing what he's doing. It is, it is pretty, I mean, in keeping with the character, it's deplorable, deplorable, but you buy that the character truly believes that. So, philosophically, are are you siding with Cough and Joe then? <laughs> <laughs> because you you say that the, that the people are all weak and sad, and so does he. I mean, I, 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 but that's the point of the film, too, is that like yeah. he's kind of right in this particular story. These people don't do anything. And it's frustrating, but then after I take some time to think about it, I'm like, well, I guess he's kind of right in this case. So I guess for this particular instance, when when you when you're surrounded by a town full of Gomer piles, sure. <laughs> and your your police chief does the worst job in Barney Five. Yeah, exactly. Like I wouldn't put it past this. Oh, that brings up something. Um, I don't think he needed a gun at the end. <laughs> No. That was kind of a but, surprise. I'm like, this guy's had a gun the whole time? <laughs> he doesn't need it. He's terrifying on his own. <laughs> but that just, just shows how badass he is. I mean, he's got a gun. He just never has to use it until, you know, shit gets way out of hand. I'm like, this guy, I mean, this guy has been whipping people, poking people's eyes out, and apparently that's the easiest thing to do. But, like, all of a sudden he pulls heat when he thinks there's ghosts around. I'm like, he had a gun this whole time? Maybe all the townsfolk knew that he was packing, so that's why they were, like, standoffish. Yeah. Like, and that maybe that yeah, I mean, helps out a little bit more. You gotta have a gun with you when you go into the Brazilian wilds. I mean, <laughs> even if you're coughing Joe. I, I would recommend this film, definitely. I would highly recommend this film. Uh, do know going into it, it does have a rape scene in it. So. Well, I mean, it, I mean, not like a very graphic one, of course, but oh yeah, it happens. Yeah, we're, we're not talking like um, I spit on your grave, but no, uh, it happens. I mean, we've been pretty upfront with saying this guy is a horrible, horrible person. Oh yeah, but th- that's kind of the point of horror movies. Specifically, or this type of story is that you're going to follow a horrible lead character probably for a majority of the film to see them get their comeuppance, which he does in oh, a yeah. particularly grueling way. In grand style, actually. It's <laughs> really cool. Um, without giving away what happens to him, does he retain that look for the rest of the films? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> in fact, in the second one, 
I'm not really spoiling anything because it's like the main draw. You you get to see Hell in color. Ooh, I'm looking forward to that. And it it is one of the most bizarre renderings of Hell I've I've ever seen. Is it like ki- on par with uh, uh, Jigoku Japanese Hell? Oh, okay. So not killing of Satan type of Hell. <laughs> no, no. Although that was bizarre in its own right, but that was fancifully <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> that that was just a bunch of like naked women in a cage for some unknown reason, and uh, one Satan in with a pitchfork and tux, <laughs> and and the Prince of Magic. You can't forget him. Oh yeah, and it, well, no, there was a Prince of Magic in his uh, red leotard or something. <laughs> so why do we watch this stuff? Because <laughs> no one else will. And it's entertaining when we talk about it, I'm sure. I'm definitely, maybe down the line, it doesn't have to necessarily be the next selection for us, but down the line, perhaps we'll get to the other two uh, installments in the Coffin Joe trilogy. I'm definitely looking forward to revisiting uh, revisiting this film down the line. But uh, you've been listening to another Mick Chats Horror Talk here on Mick GTV. Follow me here, youtube.com slash Mike Mick GTV, or at Twitter, Mike Mick GTV. And you can follow more of Dan over on YouTube.com slash 3GeeksNetwork or on Twitter at 3GeeksPodcast. Is there anything that you guys have done recently on the site in terms of reviews? Um, or Last week we uh, skipped an episode of Animaniacs and went to go see Doctor Strange. So we did do a, do a video review of that. Cool. So you can check out the, their video review of Doctor Strange on their site there. Yeah, definitely check out Coffin Joe. Check out the other movies. Do some homework ahead of us and... Uh, Agree or disagree, let us know below if uh, this oh, wait, movie's wait. worth it. Wait a minute. We we never actually said the uh, the name of the movie. <laughs> At midnight, I'll take your soul. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty apparent what the title is because they say that a lot in this movie, I noticed, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you just go search Cop and Joe, you're going to find the weird psychedelic one and watch that one first and be like this isn't at all what these guys are talking about (laughs) yeah at midnight I'll take your soul the gypsy woman says it plenty the fiance says it plenty at one point he starts saying it a lot so remember people be careful at midnight or your soul might get taken and not by Liam Neeson